Good afternoon. Welcome to episode 756. And today's topic is about, well, I'll just say what it's called first, then I'll explain what it's about. Um, do you sacrifice your relationship with yourself to be with them, in quotes? And I said at the bottom of that, no more. And if you watch this video, there'll be no more of that, hopefully. So before I explain what I mean and break it down and give you some painful reminders and some suggestions, let me choose myself so you know who I am and why I do these talks. My name is Barry Selby, in case you haven't seen my talks before. Um, my name is everywhere, so you should see that. And I am a best-selling author of the book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, which is a great book for singles and couples for love and relationships. And I could put a link for that in the comments afterwards. I'm also a um, inspirational speaker and a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And because of that, I do these talks every day as well as doing the coaching for women. For women and now it's up to number 756. Welcome to my talks. Um, called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. But today I want to talk about something in a way opposite and the same as yesterday's, which I won't tell you what that was. You have to go look at it to find out. That's a little, little, um, that's what I'm looking for. There's a word for that. <laughs> it just went out of my head. It'll come back. Anyway, um, welcome, welcome to my chat. So usually I usually know, what's, know what I'm talking about. Hopefully today will be too. These are not scripted, they're not planned, they come out every day. And by the way, I do this 5 p.m. Pacific time every day on Facebook Live if you want to watch me live and interact. If you're watching some replay, I'll tell you about the links you can find me on afterwards as well. So the topic today is about, basically, dun, 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 codependence. And so the topic today, title today is, do you, do you sacrifice the relationship with yourself to be with them, to be with somebody else? And if you watch this talk and you take some notes, the no more I put at the back end will make sense to you. So what I mean specifically, and I'm, I'm going to say this clearly because I've done this myself, so I'm not speaking from a place of theory. This is my own experience as well, is where I've changed my experience, my life, my way of being to be with that person. Now, maybe you haven't done this yourself, but I suspect you might have because if you're like anybody else, we tend to adjust and shift who we are to be with somebody else. It, it, and put this another way, it's very rare somebody to be in a relationship exactly the same way they are exactly the same way they are when they're on their own now <laughs> as i'm saying as i'm realizing i need to say this as well for some people for some people after a period of time being in that relationship they may relax back to their natural beingness of who they were before but i'm speaking more a different level of that what i'm actually speaking to is the sacrifice piece that i talked about sacrificing your relationship with yourself to be with somebody else meaning that and put it simply, you put up with crap. Now, I've got to be careful I say this about my own experience because I want to be honest. In my past relationships, there have been relationships indeed where I have put up with stuff with my partner that I, frankly, that I contributed to. So it wasn't like I was independent or a victim of this. I actually contributed to the problem. And so I ended up having to get out of the relationship because it wasn't working. But I know people have been in relationships for 10, 15, 20, 30 years where they sacrificed their own freedoms, their own choices, their own creativity, their own joy to stay in that relationship. Now, there are those people who choose to stay in a relationship because of the kids or because of something else that they think is more important than who they are. That last part I have an issue with. If you think that something out there is more important than who you are in a relationship, you may, be not, may, may, be not, make, you may not be making the best choice. It's funny, I'm saying stuff and then the next thing shows up right after that. The next thing I want to say, which is after that, is that also for some of us, we have to sacrifice who we are for a greater good if we're serving a mission, purpose, calling in the world. That's not the same thing as relationship. Okay, let me break this one down as well. I'm, resing, I'm, I'm getting stuff thrown at me in my awareness that I need to break down and explain. So purpose in the world and relationship are not the same thing for most people. For some people it is, but for most people, we have a calling and a purpose and a delivery, a vision, something to do in the world, sorry, in the world, let me show you the right side of the screen I'm on, in the world, that is different from our romantic relationships. Sacrificing yourself, especially sacrificing your ego and your small self to serve a greater good, to make a difference, is absolutely wonderful. Yeah, sorry, I'll make sure which side of the screen I'm keeping on. So, purpose, relationship, keep it on the right side of the screen. Being in a relationship is where you celebrate yourself. In a sense, you honor yourself and you respect yourself with your partner. And you do the same thing for them and they do the same thing for you. This is a 
That's the joy of being in a relationship, by the way, is having a partner who can dance with you, play with you, and work with you, and be with you in a way that really works. Your purpose, a little different. I'm not going to get into that now because I've talked about it other times. If you want to find out more about purpose stuff, I can talk to you privately about that. The relationship piece. Let me put that now in the center, <laughs> just to get my mind straight on this. Being in a relationship, my, I'm say this one, my philosophy, my belief, my recommendation, my teaching about relationship is that it's additive to your life. It doesn't fill a vacuum you think you have, and it doesn't replace something you think you're not. So when you sacrifice yourself for a relationship, you're basically replacing something you are with something you think you need, kind of, sort of. And that's a trap, because as I said before, and I said at the beginning of this, I do have this thing with codependency. I have many past experiences of codependency, and I'm adamant about re removing it from our experience. Now, let me give you a quick, quick Cliff Notes version of codependency, so you, in case you missed the previous broadcast, you know what I'm talking about. Codependency is, um, in simple terms, oh, this is an interesting way of saying it. <laughs> oh, that just came through. Okay. This is not the usual way of saying it, but it's what's coming through. Codependency is basically playing as if you're a puppet of somebody else. Oh, that's painful. But it's true. Codependency is being, is basically tying your strings to a puppet master, giving your person, your partner the power to pull your strings however they want. That may sound kind of romantic, but it's very distorted. It's not healthy. Part of that is because we have this sense that somehow our partnership is more than important than who we are, which again gets back to what I said at the beginning about we sacrifice ourselves for our partnership. Don't do that. I mean, <laughs> that, yeah, that would change it right there. Just saying don't do that and you'll be fine. No, what I mean is <laughs> when you find yourself dating somebody, get into a relationship, where you find yourself being um, invited, persuaded, cajoled, punished, pressured into giving up something about yourself for your partner, that, that basically for me is a stop, reverse, and get out sign. A signal, excuse me, not sign, signal. If you're in a place where you're feeling yourself being um, influenced, coerced, cajoled, etc., etc., to be who you're not for the sake of your partnership, that's not a healthy choice. And again, that's the codependent piece because you're sacrificing yourself for somebody else and not in a healthy way. No, I didn't talk about it. Okay, it's all right. I'm <laughs> in case you're wondering, in here is a lot of stuff going on at the same time. A lot of thoughts have been downloading and concepts and teachings and stuff. And this is where I, I, I don't channel so much as I, I argue. <laughs> but this is coming through, so I'm speaking about it. Welcome to, my, <laughs> welcome to my playground. This is kind of how things happen in my talks. Okay, let me rewind a bit. In the paradigm of relationship, as I said before, the, 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 the current explanation of codependency is one where you give your partner the strings to your, to the puppet strings to your life. And that's not healthy. It's also, um, yeah. Codependency is also the paradigm where you believe you're not worthy. And, not because, but and, it's a place where you feel you're not complete unless you have somebody else with you. Now, sidebar slightly, because something I talked about with a friend of mine recently, I'm gonna get very esoteric for a moment, so bear with me. I'll come back to reality in a moment. Um, if you haven't done, if you haven't test checked your human design profile, um, I'll put a link in the comments and check it out. But one thing I learned recently about it, and I don't know much, I've been learning recently about it, so I'm not an expert on this, but a friend of mine is an expert, and I was talking to her about this, and she gave me some great feedback. Part of the human design um, description, which is based on, on, it's like a horoscope, but different, way different. That we human beings are, we have different definitions. A definition of beingness, which is basically on how our alignment is inside. And so they have a thing called a single definition and then a split definition. And a split definition person, and um, I'm going to put the links in, you might be interested in checking it out for yourself, is someone who basically doesn't fully come into themselves unless they're in partnership. Now, this is not codependence, by the way, because I had a feeling it was initially, I was kind of judging this, but the truth is, when you have a split definition, what happens when you're in a relationship with somebody else, the right, excuse me, let me qualify that, when you're in a relationship with the right person, that it's almost like you have the fuel to your rocket. It's not a codependent thing where it's like they complete you, because that's not the way it works, but it's additive to your beingness, so you become very, um, 
you become, it's almost like they lubricate the wheels for your life to go really well and vice versa. It's a two way street. If you're with somebody who's a split for definition like you. Now, a single definition is someone who actually doesn't need relationship. And I was actually surprised to discover that's what, that's what my definition is and what explains why a lot of been times why I've been single for a long time. But also part of my work is that, that because I'm being single definition, I include both sides. It means I can talk to people who are in a relationship or people who are single to help them along. But one thing I became clear about is being a single definition, there's no hint. Well, let me say that carefully. <laughs> there's no... Um, hmm. I'll say there's no temptation either. Let me just say I've been in codependent relationships a lot in my past, but I'm realizing more and more the more I own and claim my space both in my work and in my life. Codependency doesn't have any space, which is why I'm so adamant about stamping it out. Or, or, or should say uh, disrupting it. It's probably a better way of saying it. I don't want to stamp it out. I just want to disrupt codependence because it's, it gets in the way of healthy relationships. And so getting back to the title at the beginning, which is like to recap that piece, if you sacrifice who you are in any way, shape or form to be with another person, first of all, they don't deserve you. I'll read that again. They don't deserve you if it happens. And secondly, they are absolutely um, the wrong person to be with. Simple as that. Because for me, the, the understanding of this paradigm is that, well, give me to codependency for a second. Codependency only works when people play at less than who they are. Which means that either either you are playing less than you who you are or your partner requires it from you and neither one of them is healthy. I know I gave you just a whole bunch of stuff about human design, but the thing for me understanding more and more about this paradigm is that we as human beings, well, first of all, we're evolving, we're, we're evol not re evolving, evolving as a culture, we're shifting and growing as it is. The old paradigm that we were raised with from hundreds of years ago where um, re relationships were necessary for proliferation and for population increase for the human race that's not so much necessary anymore it's why a lot of people coming in through the through uh, millennials and other generations are not as called into that place as previous generations were you know baby boomers before were driven by relationship family etc most of us nowadays don't have that calling those of us who are awake especially and now i know from my own definition in in human design that's one reason why it's not calling me that way at times I had some concern about that. Now I feel very free because of that. So again, I'll put a link in the comments for the human design. Um, it's called the Jovian Archive, I think it's called. Links, you can get your own test and you can let me know in the description at the end if you are single or split definition, because I'm curious to know. But also, understanding that the relationship is an additive to your life. If you look at relationships being something that adds to who you are, there's no replacement, there's no gap, there's no sense of filling up something you're missing. It's when you look at relationship as being something you must have to, to live, that's the tendency towards codependence. And I'm adamant, as you may have guessed by my talks, that codependence is not healthy. And as I said before, it's like, you, it's like having puppet strings you give to somebody else to control. Now, <laughs> if you're into BDSM, that might work for you, and I'm not talking about that. Um, totally went out left field there, that was interesting. Okay, getting back on track. However, I'm very clear that if you want to have a healthy relationship, First of all, you don't have pu you don't have puppet strings anyway, so give that up. But secondly, your um, choice, your opportunity, is to learn how to manage yourself. So in a way, if you do want to have puppet strings, you give them to yourself. Again, relationship with yourself before relationship with somebody else. It's tempting, as we've been raised in this culture, to keep looking at there for love, for there for fulfillment, there for partnership. But if you start where you live inside of yourself, with relationship with self first joy and celebration of who you are self happiness with who you are as a being so you basically build a healthy relationship with yourself and then when you seek relationship out there it's a much easier much healthier and much clearer to define if it fits or not no sacrifice no giving things up no pretending you're not already whole it's actually more functional to be more open to healthy relationships when you already have a great relationship with yourself and that's the key by the way healthy relationship relationships out there begin with a relationship relationship in there which is what i talked about yesterday um, that was that was talking about how um, one relationship to rule them all. I was playing off a Lord of the Rings um, quote. But this is the thing I want to keep reminding you is that real relationships out there work much more effectively and are much healthier when you don't need them. 
And the way you get out of the need is to work on yourself and love yourself up so you don't need to keep pursuing somebody. When you then get into a relationship, first of all, you're a healthier place because you don't need them with their love. Secondly, you become more attractive. And if you're looking for healthy relationships, being attractive is a good thing. Let's see if there's anything else on this. So I think I made my points adamant and clear enough so you get what I'm talking about. Uh, put, again, I put links in the comments for my book, um, for the Jovian Archive, which is the human design thing. That, that's something you can just go click on the link, go check it out. Um, and third, if you want to get some help, I'll put a link in the comments for a discovery session with me because I feel like this is something we can talk about further. And if you want to go deeper, you can find me that way and then we talk and you can see what lines up for you. Um, what else was going to be on that? I think that's everything I want to say. I haven't seen any comments, so I guess I'm doing okay. Um, I do appreciate you watching, by the way. This is my daily Facebook Live I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. The replays for your uh, your reviewing pleasure <laughs> are on my business page, which is facebook.com forward slash barryselby.author. Please like my page. And you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. All my social media is my name. Um, yes. And on that channel is a playlist called Messages from the Masculine. So you can watch them all there too. And by the way, I think YouTube's easier to find my replays because you can search by title in the playlist. Much easier than doing it on Facebook because it's much slower on, on Facebook to find. I think that's it. If you have any questions, thoughts, concerns about this topic, please put them in the comments below. I respond when I sign off. If you want to share it with anybody, please do that as well. And again, I'll put links in the comments for my book, Joby and Archive, Discover Session with me, three things. And I invite you to check them all out. And if you want to get help, reach out. That's what I'm here for. I thank you for watching. Once again, I'll be back in tomorrow for another talk, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Um, we'll see what that's going to be. With that, thank you for watching. I invite you to take care of yourself. I will see you again tomorrow. Take care.